Hello and welcome to Coffee with Cassie's Mom. We're here to discuss ways that parents can be more involved with having a successful experience with their college student. Today we're visiting with Brenda Edmonds and she's a professor of mathematics at JCCC. Welcome Professor Edmonds. Hi. I know the classroom environment is very important to learning and academic success. And from a faculty's perspective, how do you feel a parent can support their student in understanding this important part? Well, I think the first thing um, would be to help your student understand that different professors are going to have different expectations depending on the subject, depending on the professor, their teaching style, the students in the class. So. Unlike high school where there might be policies across the school, every professor may set their own policies about things like cell phones, attendance, things like that. So it's really important that you help the student understand that they need to pay attention to the syllabus, whatever might have been discussed in class, and um, pay attention to that professor's individual mm -hmm. expectations. The other thing I think that's important to understand is that all the students here have paid to be in class and so if there's something that's happening that a student might be doing that's interfering with other students ability to benefit from being in that class that the teacher really has an obligation to do something about that so whether that's your own child that might be doing something that's disrupting class or they're experiencing something that's disruptive to their ability to learn um, that you know that that can't happen mm -hmm. and they need to allow the teacher to deal with that some other things that you know would probably be common across classes would be that the teacher is going to expect the students to participate in a positive way and you know the time for um, being sarcastic or mm -hmm. trying to be funny to make all your classmates laugh that's not always appropriate and there's not always time for that um, so that's, you know, that's something that's sometimes a little different from what students, especially right out of high school, may have experienced. And I think that no matter what the instructor's policy is, I think the key thing is that, you know, students want to make sure that they avoid being distracting in class to the other students. So if that means they're having conversations that are not pertinent to the class work, or if they're working on a laptop and doing something else that's not related to class work, or cell phone, it, you know, it's just important to help them understand that everybody's paid to be there and so they want to benefit from that time that they're in that classroom and so not being distracting mm -hmm. and, and not allowing other students to distract them too. Certainly I'm sure across every discipline I know in my own classes it's really important that my students are respectful to other students so if a student asks a question you know, being, being respectful to that student's question and that they have a right to ask that question and as long as the professor is is um, feels that that's an appropriate time for questions in class that that's something that other students need to be respectful of too and and of course that's always important I think the other thing that parents could help students uh, understand about college is that ultimately the student is the one that's responsible for their own learning um, and so they shouldn't expect the professor to necessarily seek them out to say hey I notice you need help but the student needs to be responsible for going to the instructor, asking for help, going to the instructor and saying, hey, I'm finding some things distracting, <laughs> going to the instructor and, and asking for maybe suggestions about how to be successful in class. And so they, they really need to be the ones that are, are responsible for that. Um, I think, uh, and you know, out of all that, I think just encouraging your student to talk with their professor if they're needing help or if they're having problems with something that's happening in class and understanding that that professor, they want all of those students to be successful and so, you know, whatever they're doing, it's really about trying to help all the students be as successful as they can. Could you tell us today, Brenda, what style your classroom would be like or what we could expect if we were in your class? Well, I do try to keep things different. <laughs> different days are different. Um, but a lot of days um, there will be time for students to be working on something, maybe in small groups. Sometimes I do that at the beginning of class and as soon as they walk in they're working on a worksheet or a question on the board they're supposed to discuss. Um, sometimes I do that at the end of class, sometimes in the middle of class. 
Uh, I also have some times of lecture during the class uh, where they should be probably taking notes, but also some question and answer back and forth where I'm asking questions, students are asking questions, volunteering answers. Um, we also have time sometimes for students to ask questions over mm -hmm. previous homework, be sure they're clear about what might be upcoming for assignments, make sure that they're clear about what the requirements are for any upcoming assignments and things like that. So. Um, that's a pretty typical class period, but we do different things different days, so who knows. <laughs> if your son or daughter has, say, an important doctor's appointment or something that they have to go to in the middle of class, but they don't want to miss the whole class, is there a way that you would like to be told about that or contacted? Yeah, I just, and I tell them this at the beginning of the semester too, that if they do have something that they know they're going to have to leave early, just tell me, even if it's just the, at the beginning of class, hey, I have an appointment today and I'm going to have to leave 10 minutes early, I'll probably ask them to sit near the door or near an aisle so they're not disruptive to everyone else when they leave. I know that they're going to leave so I don't get distracted when I'm trying to teach a lesson and somebody suddenly moving around. And, and sometimes even if they could let the other students around them know that they're going to have mm -hmm. to leave. And so I think it's just, you know, being respectful and letting the people around you know that you have something. Um, I would certainly much rather they come to class for part of the class period, even if they have to leave early, yeah. but just to have the respect to let us know what's going to be happening. Um, you know, sometimes students are late too, and I know sometimes that's unavoidable. There's a traffic problem or whatever, and I would much rather they come late than not at all, but um, certainly if it's a habit, mm -hmm. uh, that's something that can also be disruptive to the rest of class, and, and you would certainly like to help them <laughs> try yeah. to arrive on time or arrive yeah. early, in fact, um, so that they don't have trouble with that. I know some kids when they go to college, they think, oh, they hear other kids, oh, you can skip, you can come to class when you want, just take the test, it's no big deal. Is that a myth or is that something that really, that you have a different policy in your classroom? <laughs> Well, um, one thing that's important about college to understand is that different professors may have different policies about attendance, and there are some instructors that have very strict attendance policies. Um, there are some that are more lax. Um, I will say that I have class participation points nearly every day, and there are no makeups for those. So while a student may not be there, um, they miss those participation points every day. And so sometimes that's just a, a small problem that they might do at the end of class. Sometimes it might be asking them to write down what, what did you think were the key ideas today, but I always have something where I'm getting some interaction between me and the student and something where I can give them some points every day. Um, certainly I know, you know, we're all grown-ups and we all have times where we have to miss for whatever reason, whether it's an actual illness or some other conflict. And so I do build in a few uh, grades that I drop for that and I don't do excused or unexcused absences. Mm -hmm. I, I just assume that my students are um, going to be responsible about mm -hmm. that. But certainly if their absences begin to pile up, um, they lose points on participation. Mm -hmm. They also are they also find that while they might think they can keep up with the course material mm -hmm. on their own, that they usually cannot keep mm -hmm. up with the course material on their own. So their grades often will start to suffer. Um, and so, you know, if I can get to them to talk to them, if they show up and I can talk to them, I'll usually try to have a conversation with them about that. But um, I think, you know, in terms of, of being in class, it is tempting sometimes mm -hmm. as a student to say, it's a beautiful day. I think I'd rather go, um, go to the park than go to class. But um, just understanding that, you know, you've, you've chosen to be here in college and uh, you, somebody has paid some money for you to be here. So you need to be being responsible about, you know, making the most of that opportunity. So. I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> Thank you so much for sharing. You have really given us some insightful tips to help share with our college students. I appreciate you coming today, Brenda. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, that's all for now. You can find more tips and videos for parents on Coffee with Cassie's Mom on the Johnson County Community College website. And for students, go to Coffee with Cassie. As Charles Schultz once said, all you need is love, but a little chocolate now and then doesn't hurt. Bye for now.